looking at signs. Signs, you know, like neon signs and other kinds of signs, especially neon signs, because we're screwing around this week with neon signs. Yes. We're going to try to build miniature neon signs for model railroads and other miniatures, but specifically model railroads. How do you put a neon sign on your model railroad? That's a thought for and you. just exactly what the heck is a neon yeah, sign? So that's what we're up to neon signs, particularly in miniature. I suppose signs have been around since the caveman Og first hung a shingle out announcing himself as a psychiatrist. But there was an actual sort of golden age of signs that happened in the 1940s and 50s, particularly in Las Vegas. Now, that which goes up, of course, must come down, and so these signs all got sort of hauled out in the desert and just sort of junked and kept for spare parts. And actually, I thought that was a much more interesting place even than the Strip. It was used in a bunch of movies. They called it the Sign Boneyard. It was in National Lampoon's Las Vegas Vacation and in a movie called One from the Heart. But what an interesting junkyard, a junkyard of old casino signs. Well, and of course, anything that's actually interesting is going to get capitalized on. And so the boneyard's been pulled downtown and put on Las Vegas Boulevard and turned into a museum, a museum of the old Las Vegas signs. And it's turning out to be an amazingly popular tourist attraction. Now, if you grew up in and around Las Vegas, this is really fascinating to see some of these old signs from hotels and casinos that most people would have never even heard of, and even small motels and restaurants and so on. It's all been hauled over here to the La Concha Motel, which is another one of those interestingly weird old Vegas iconic structures. Most of the signs are being left in their, well, let's call it barn fresh state, really beat up and non-functional, just like they came in from the desert. But a handful of them are being restored and rebuilt. And a few of them are even being moved over to Las Vegas Boulevard and set up in a working condition out on the boulevard. They're looking for funds and whatnot to restore some of the signs, and some of them have been completed. This is their first really huge success, the Liveracci Neon, and it's sort of the prized possession of the collection. But what really interests us for purposes of our project are the little neon signs that pop up all over the neighborhoods, often for a hotel or a bar, usually just totally beat to crap and in need of some serious repair work. Some of them are really big and iconic. This is Karen's favorite sign, the Felix Chevrolet sign in Los Angeles. Literally a national landmark. Okay, some history. Neon was invented by Georges Claude of Paris, France in 1910. He introduced the concept by building a neon sign for the Paris Auto Show that year, and it was a huge success. Now, he wasn't interested in building neon signs. He was much more interested in selling the equipment that you would use to make neon signs. I guess you could call him an early steampunk artist. But this was a very successful business model because by 1940, it is estimated that there were over 4,000 neon sign shops just in the United States, and neon signs were just as popular in Asia, so go figure. Neon signs are made by taking glass tube, typically 14 millimeter glass tube, and bending it into the shape that you need for the sign, and then pumping the air out of it and refilling it with neon or sometimes argon gas. If you add argon, you also add a droplet of mercury. The inside of the argon tubes are then coated with phosphors and they can glow any color that you want. 
Okay, let's look at some miniature signs for model railroading. There's a bunch of new products out there that utilize something called electroluminescent panels, and these can look something like a neon sign. You can see here that in actual practice, it may not give you exactly what you're after, but the signs themselves are quite fascinating, even though they don't generally look that much like a neon sign but they are often animated and they're really, really cool. But if you really want something that looks like a neon sign, this is the old school technique. This is what Steve Stribble has done on his O-scale railroad. And in this case, what you do is you engrave the neon sign into a sheet of plexiglass and then apply illumination to the edge of the plexiglass and that causes the engraved section to glow and boy can it look suspiciously like a neon sign. There are a bunch of kits available and you can call the retail store from the website and they will direct you to some of these kits. But there is a company out there called Vector Cut and they will custom cut neon signs for you if you want. And I will put a link on the website to Vector Cut. They are also beginning to roll out their own kits for making neon signs. Their very first offering is a small HO scale bar sign, which is frankly incredible. Check this puppy out. <laughs> Okay, now this is what I've actually come to talk about. This is called electroluminescent wire. It's a thin core of conductive wire that's then coated over with an insulated section that also has phosphors in it. Then that whole business is wrapped with microscopic wire to carry the second pole of an electrical signal. And then that whole thing has to be jacketed in a clear coat because there's about 90 volts on there and well that could really focus your attention if you touched it. While soldering to this stuff would be virtually impossible, there are little connectors that are made for snapping onto the wire for providing electrical connection and you can cut it to any length that you want. It uses the same phosphors as argon signs, so they're the same colors. It's a cousin to this product, the Electroluminescent Panel. The Electroluminescent Panel was created to backlight liquid crystal displays, LCD displays, for use on cell phones, computer screens, television sets, and that sort of thing. Bet you anything you're watching this presentation on an Electroluminescent Panel. But there's a good deal of flexibility to an Electroluminescent Panel. You can print the phosphors directly onto a clear plastic sheet. You can then print the conductive materials on there. And that's how this new generation of sign is being created, by simply printing phosphors and conductive materials onto clear plastic sheet. And there are companies out there that'll custom do this if you want to make your own. It's a little expensive, though. Anyway, back to the electroluminescent panels. You can buy small and even large electroluminescent panels they're very thin, they're just plastic, and you can easily cut them with scissors and turn them into anything you darn well please. You can layer opaque materials or paint over the top of it. This is a great way to do a modern fluorescent panel ceiling. Take one of these and just print the ceiling onto it and then stick it in your modern building. Okay, let's get back to the electroluminescent wire. Now it is available in a 0.9 millimeter size. That's the smallest you can get. And while that's rather large for the small scales, it's perfect for 122 scale. It requires a power supply called an inverter. So you need to buy a couple of things. And it's all available at this website, thatscoolwire.com. That's the only website that I have found that offers the small 0.9 millimeter size and they have some kits that you can buy with sequencers, dimmers and all kinds of things. So I bought one of their kits. This is the inverter, the power supply. It also contains a dimmer and a flasher with a speed control for both. I also purchased a 9 volt power supply so that I wouldn't have to just run it forever on batteries. 
that's much more convenient. And then it came with a pre-connected length of about 15 feet of electroluminescent wire. In this case, I ordered neon orange red for a color because that's what I want to simulate is a neon sign, not an argon sign. The inverter works really well, but it does produce a high-pitched squeal, which is rather annoying, so I'm going to put it in some sort of box because I'm sick and tired of listening to it. Now here's the sign I chose to do, the New Rex Hotel, kind of a southwesty and incredibly beat up old thing, but I just love the rust. So after a bit of work in Photoshop, I came up with the front face for this thing. I just printed that on my inkjet printer to use on the sign. I constructed the sign out of plastic sheeting, just good old evergreen plastic sheeting, and that turned out just fine. Wasn't sure how many holes to drill and whatnot because I didn't know how this whole thing was going to work. Went ahead and weathered the whole thing before starting to rig the neon. Now what I did find is you just can't crimp the neon all that tightly. If you do, the conductor comes through the phosphor, shorts out to the outer conductors, and the whole thing dies. And even if it doesn't hurt the inverter, it leaves a brown spot on the neon. So you don't want to try kinking it too tight. So what I had to do was go back and drill a ton of holes so that I could fish it in and out like shoelaces as opposed to trying to kink it very tightly on the surface of the sign the way you would do with an actual neon sign. Because I wasn't aware of exactly how I was going to do this without experimentation, I ended up drilling more holes than I needed and rigging the thing several different times just to try out different ideas. But over time, I came up with a plan on how I was going to pull the wire through there to make it look like bent neon tube and started rigging my letters. Now I used cyanoacrylic glue. Mistake! Do not glue this with cyanoacrylic. The cyanoacrylic turns kind of yellow and discolors your neon and doesn't produce a very pleasant look at all. So stay away from cyanoacrylic. I'm going to try to figure out how to fix mine. But anyway, there's the finished sign with just the hotel. And then I went ahead and did the small letters, which was actually simpler because by now I kind of had a sense of what I was doing. Well, that's just fascinating and fun and interesting and, and I had a lot of fun building the little sign right and next sign I build will turn out better yeah of course even better because right. now I'm sort of figuring it out there's a certain knack to using that wire like mm -hmm. there's a knack to doing everything right. but now that I'm kind of getting a sense of it and I'm a little less intimidated by it the next sign will turn out just amazing and I think oh, you oh, should I'm build, build one, one. I, I'm gonna do the Felix Chevrolet sign absolutely because yeah. that's your favorite well, sign of course it's, it's right there in LA and never Warner, mind Figaro it's and Jefferson my favorite dealership yeah, yeah. and, and it's, cool. an, it's a national landmark of it's course. an icon knows where that yeah is. it's just Felix <laughs> Chevrolet in right. LA I mean absolutely. you know yeah. it's been there forever it's gotta gotta be well, if you haven't been over to the website, you might want to get over to toymantelevision.com. More specifically, this week, you might want to get over to guyshobbyshop.com. And yes, there is a link on the channel page. It'll take you there because I'm going to put links to these products and suppliers and so on right. on Guy's Hobby Shop. So that's really cool. And if you haven't been over to the channel page, then you're probably not a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Slacker. So you can solve all these problems by clicking on the little blue button that's going to be popping in just over here, right. just about now, and that'll take you to the channel page and it'll subscribe you. If you're a subscriber, it will just take you to the channel page. And actually that's popping in just about now. So we're not sure how you found this fun and informative video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. Enlightening. Enlightening, absolutely enlightening. And we will see you here again in one week with some more significant and massive screwing around. See you then. Bye-bye.